All right, so let's talk about polarity and polar molecules and polar bonds and what that means. Um, we know polarity means an unequal sharing of electrons. So when we talk about covalent bonds, they're actually sharing those electrons between them, those valence electrons, but sometimes they're not equal sharing. Sometimes one electron, or sorry, one element is actually going to share those electrons more than the other. They're actually going to be electron hogs versus electron givers. Okay, so electronegativity is what's playing a major part in this. It's, it's a big thing. So it's the ability to attract electrons. And we know the trend of electronegativity is that fluorine is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. It has electronegativity value of uh, 3.98. Now, this is actually all in comparison. These aren't actual values. That's why there's no unit. These are actually in comparison with fluorine, the most electronegative atom. So Francium has electronegativity negativity value of 0 0.7, significantly less. This is, the most, this is the least electronegative atom on the periodic table. This is the most electronegative atom. So how does that actually play a part in polarity? Well, when these things bond, one of the, the fluorine in this case would take all the electrons and hog them because they love electrons. These guys, um, high electronegativity means I'm an electron lover. This guy doesn't like electrons once you give them up. So how do they come together? So when you, come with, when you, come, when you have a molecule, that is, you know, nitrogen, for example, that is e the two elements are the same, they actually do have an equal sharing. This nitrogen is going to have the electrons around it the same amount of time this nitrogen is. This is going to be a nonpolar bond. However, when you go over to carbon monoxide, the value of the electronegativity value for carbon is 2.55, where the electronegativity value for oxygen is 3.44. This guy is much more electronegative, much more of an electron lover. So all the electrons are going to be crowded around the oxygen. So we're actually going to denote that. And all the electrons are going to go this way, making this guy slightly negative and this guy slightly positive. And the way to denote that is we're going to have this symbol. This guy's sorry. This guy's going to be slightly negative. This guy is going to be slightly positive. That's a lowercase delta, which represents the slightly negative or slightly positive um, charge. So because all the electrons are coming around oxygen. Okay, great. So that's a polar bond. Um, but how do we denote that that, that, that that makes it polar? Well, we have to look at the electronegativity negati difference, the difference between the electronegativity values of those two elements in the bond. If the value is greater than 1.7, it's actually going to be ionic, meaning they're actually not going to share those electrons anymore. One's actually going to take from the other one. So they're extremely electronegative. The difference between them is very, very great. So but just instead of sharing, they're going to transfer. A polar covalent bond is between 0.4 and 1.7, the difference between the two electronegativity values. If it's nonpolar, it's going to be pretty much the same. Um, they're actually going to have either no difference or up to 0.4 difference if you subtract the negativity values. Um, and that would be a nonpolar, meaning they're pretty much equally shared between the two atoms. But then how does this play a part when you're talking about molecules, um, polar molecules? Well, <clears throat> let's take water, for example. Water, we know, is a polar molecule. Um, if you take the shape of water, we know it's a bent molecule. We have these uh, lone pair of electrons that are unshared, pushing those hydrogens down. This is a non-symmetrical. It might look symmetrical um, if you put a, a line this way. However, we're going to say it's not symmetrical because overall the whole picture is not a symmetrical picture. If you put a line this way, it's not the same up and down. So we're going to say it's polar. There's actually an uneven pull. Um, the electrons are going to go towards the oxygen, making this, guy, this end of the molecule slightly negative and this end of the molecule slightly positive. Okay? So this is what we call a polar molecule. Now if we go over to here to carbon tetrachloride, um, this is, as you can see, very symmetrical. We're going to say overall the electron dis distribution between this molecule is even. There's no one side being more pulled than the other. However, if you look at just the carbon chloride bond, we can say the difference between this is pretty great. This is a polar bond. So you can have polar bonds within a polar molecule. That does happen. It will exist. This is an example of that. If you look at the shapes of your molecules, um, you might see the ones that are always going to be polar, no matter what, because of those lone pair of electrons, are going to be bent for sure. Bent will always be polar. Another thing will always be polar is trigonal um, pyramidal. You don't have to think about it. Those two. always polar because of those lone pair of electrons. Otherwise, you're going to have to take and analyze what exactly is if they're different ones. For example, if this was, I don't know, let's say bromide, bromine, this would then be polar because then there's, this is different. This is not symmetrical. These guys are different than this guy. So <clears throat> you actually have to look at those to see if it's polar or not. 
And polarity actually makes a big deal, is a big deal. You want to uh, know if something's polar or not because due to like, you know, the reason oil and water don't mix, for example, is because of polarity. Um, water is polar, oil is nonpolar. So when you get into things more advanced topics, this, uh, this t polarity issue will definitely come up again. So this is how you deci decipher it. <laughs>